It's a light heavyweight matchup between Antonio Rogerio Noguera and Rashad Evans. So here he is, one of the better ground and pound guys we have in the sport here at present. There's just an efficiency and an accuracy to the way he approaches the ground strikes. No wasted motion out of this guy. Oh, it's, it's an art form, John. It's the way that he goes at his opponents, and the moment they hit the mat, he secures them. Oh, it's on. He doesn't rush. He takes his time. He knows that it does not take much in order to finish a fight. So he'll find his posture. You can't, he doesn't waste time with his head to chest, just punching. Finds posture. Once he finds posture, he can get momentum to land the big strike, then he moves position. And then he goes and he finds another strike. Before long, you see his opponent face swelling. You see the eyes all split open and beat. It's truly, truly amazing to watch him and watch his approach to ground and pop. And great cardio allows him to stay heavy. We've seen a lot of fighters just struggle to buck him off. We'll see how it goes tonight. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished strikers in this division. Sprawl and brawl, whatever you want to say, he's going to try to keep this fight standing tonight. It does not matter how he accomplishes it. All he wants to do is be on his feet and at range, hitting you with a beautiful jab, staying away from the grappling exchanges. You don't accomplish all the things that this man has accomplished over the course of his career without understanding distance. He has great distance management, which then in turn allows him to land all these beautiful diverse kicks, spinning back kick, jumping high kick, so many things he possesses that he will try to use tonight in this fight. Yeah, if this turns into a kickboxing match tonight, so, most people over. believe, yeah, his opponent is in a it's world over, of trouble. Our tale of the tape for this light heavyweight tilt. The American is 40, the Brazilian is 44. He is two inches taller, the reach, is the same. All right, now for the particulars, we go inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC light heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 24 wins, eight losses, and one draw. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Sugar Rashad Evans. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 22 wins, eight losses. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Antonio Rogério Nogueira. And with the attributes, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, third man in the octagon for this one. So here we go, round one of this highly anticipated tilt between the strong striker and the decorated grappler. Any chance that these guys mix it up, or are you just expecting them to stick to what got them to the dance? I'm expecting a pretty straightforward approach from both of these fighters. The striker will try to lead with his punches and his kicks, and the grappler will try to time a takedown, time a clinch position so he can start to work towards a lot of those great judo throws that he possesses. Once on the ground, he is in his realm and will start to chase submissions. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you gotta be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes. You need a controlled posture on the bottom, and if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, continue to gain posture and rain down big strikes with your opponent. Oh! Now he falls back into the finishing position. Tapping out tonight. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you looking for? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, 
but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns in the opposite direction, you throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. I mean, how many can he take? Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the ground and pound starts. Lands the ground and pound strike. I mean, how many can he take? Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. I mean, how many can he take? Grounded pound strike there now. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you've got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop you the fight. you got to defend. But you can see him now starting to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it back to the days of guys like Mark Coleman just beating people up in the ground and pound. This guy is a throwback fighter who's very fun to watch. Yeah, the godfather would be proud. Oh, the difference in the striking is crazy. Well, he has really put his opponent on the defensive here early. Very aggressive right out of the shoot. He has landed a high number of total strikes. Exactly the aggression you'd like to see given what is at stake here tonight. Big power punch land. Now we get back to range. Back and forth we go! Hey, finally gets the takedown. It wasn't for any lack of effort, but finally that shot was good enough to get his opponent down. I don't know how many times, John, I could have watched this guy shoot takedown attempts without securing one. It's almost like out of pity. You feel good for him to finally get it done. Now what does he do with this top of the all right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Throws the right hand there. All right, so he postures up here and now figures to rain down some ground strikes. Yeah, the ground and pound will be a plenty from this position. Punch coming, it's blocked. Let's take a look back at some of the replays from that last round. Unbelievable to see these high-level competitors get in each other's face, tuck their chin, bite down on the mouth guard, and just let it all hang out over the course of five minutes. All right, here we go. Ready to fight? Ready. Round two here. Look at how he turns his hip over when he throws that kick. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Oh! He was hurt. Oh, huge elbow! Well, these 
Those are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly. Oh, and he hip tosses him to the mat. Now we'll see what he can do from here, DC. Right into side control. He's going to try to control him, then find a submission. Oh, you can hear the crowd reaction every time he lands another hook. The previous round, it was hooks and bunches, more of the same here. More of the same, John. You watch a guy who he jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Posturing up now, and he's out. Right now, it looks like he may be trying to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Oh, he postured up there. Now he's okay. Now he can escape. No Gary grounded pound from half guard now. Let's see if he can do some damage. All right, has the guard closed here. Oh, nice work from the bottom. Tags him with the punch. Connects with the right. Evans is lower. John now starting to show signs of swelling. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Man, how fun is this to watch as he continues to dole out damage with the ground and pound? Take it. Oh, it looks like he's transitioning to an armbar. You cannot stay in the guard of these great jujitsu guys. Attack armbar here. Nicely done. Oh, and he gives up his back. This is not a fighter you want anywhere near your backside. This could be it. I mean, this guy is so educated in chokes. He's so educated in terms of controlling positions. You're not going to roll around and scramble to get this guy off. He follows you with every bit of himself, and he's going to try and find that choke. And if you're not careful, he will latch onto an arm when you think you're right about to escape and get you with the arm. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. So a much different approach from him here in round two. It took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here and as a result has really picked up the pace in round two. Trying to establish that jab once again. Nice kick. These guys are going at it. Lands a glancing right hand upstairs. Stuff the takedown, no problem. Left hand punch the clinch. That knee might have landed there. Oh, collar tie. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. Oh, there's a takedown attempt. DC didn't take him long to find his range here tonight, huh? His timing is on point. 20 seconds to go. The right hand just misses. Seconds winding down in round two. Well, he keeps going back to the well with that left hand just out of range. So a big round for him there, DC. We'll go back and look at some of the highlights. Big knockdown for him. We'll see if he can follow it up. You could see that he was flowing. Everything was working in accordance to what he wanted it to be. And at the moment that it showed itself, the moment that the opportunity arrived, he jumped on it, got that big knockdown, and now he finds himself ahead in this fight. You ready, fight? Ready. Third round underway. 
nice punch lands over the top. Nice leg kick. Huge block there. Oh. Now he's got the Muay Thai plunk. All right, so he's landed some good shots. You hate to be overly critical, but nothing really in terms of combinations tonight. Well, the jab has been looking great. How about jab, jab, right hand? Right. Because eventually you're gonna have to put something on your opponent that's gonna really make them pause. I believe the jab has been working so well that he drops a big right hand after it, he may be able to finish his fight. Light kick checked effectively there by Evans. Oh, and he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those punches. Oh, he heard a bell with the jab. All right, he engages in the single collar time. Oh! He needs to start looking at the fish. Oh, he did. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Oh, wow. Oh! Countering, it looks like with a bomb flu choke, or maybe we should call it the OSP now, but trying to get out of the guillotine by submitting his opponent. Incredible. Somehow stays in the fight. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. And he's out. Evans' lower jaw is extremely swollen now. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here. Just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by Evans. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Close guard. With two minutes and change to go in round three. Under two minutes now with which to work. Oh, and he escapes up. Nicely done as he gets the double leg take there. All right, he's hanging out inside the closed guard of his opponent here, DC. You gotta be careful. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by No Care. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. This man has embraced it, and you are seeing why he's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. All right, close guard now. You gotta be careful, though. He's got a lot of submissions off his back. Nogueira is looking to go from the full to the half guard here. Opponent not having it. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the block. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by Evans. 30 seconds now to go in the round. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. Attacking arm bar. And he's out. All right, he's got the hooks in, DC working off of his back. 
Now look for him to attack the neck of his opponent to try to get the rear choke. What a fight. Official decision is in. It resides with Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge one scores this contest, 29-28, Evans. Judge two scores it, 9-28, No Guerra. And judge three scores it, 9-28, for the winner by split decision. So the judges have rendered their decision, and two of the three of them had it for him. So he gets it done by split decision tonight. You've been involved in some yeah. of those. Nothing easy standing there waiting for the judges to render this. John, score. it is the worst feeling in the world, not knowing if you did enough, right? Or not knowing what the judges were watching. So I know exactly what these guys are feeling as they walk to the center. You got your fingers crossed, you got your toes crossed, you got everything crossed, hoping that two judges saw it your way.